Hello and welcome to our today's webinar with the topic Deburring with Electrochemical Machining. My name is Sarah Muche and I'm very pleased to welcome again so many of you to our webinar. Today there are the two of us in the studio. I welcome very warmly Mr. Yilmaz. He joined the EMA group five years ago and works at the sales department. So far from my side and now I directly hand over to Mr. Yilmaz and wish you an interesting webinar. So also a uh, very warm welcome from my side uh, to today's uh, webinar. Today um, I want to talk with you, I will tell you today about the electrochemical deburring, um, how you can deburr very complex component geometries. Um, you can see uh, on my right side um, yeah, a working area, you will see there red cables, blue cables, some cylindric parts, what is behind uh, these cable colors and so on, I will tell you today. But first of all, um, we start uh, with the burr discussion. What is a burr? Why must this burr to be removed? Then, this is a theoretical, to go directly to a practical example, yeah, application of uh, ECM deburring of a valve block. Then um, I will talk about with you the ECM process. Yeah. Then we talk about these uh, two colors and the essential components in the process. Then uh, our solution, our C uh, CI debarring system, um, with all these facts about working tools, uh, our work tools, and so on. So, first of all, what is a burr? A burr is uh, the definition of a burr is uh, a body which, which is created during the mechanical machining. This body is much more smaller than the main body of the part, and this small burr is undesirable. Yeah? but sometimes unavoidable. Um, when you think about, for example, when you have a tube and uh, you drill there are two holes and then you have a um, classical intersection, burrs, sharp edges in directly in that area. Or for example, you can see of uh, uh, housing parts, uh, the milling burrs, for example, um, but last but not least, of course, everybody knows that when we look under the microscope, you will see very uh, small burrs. When you drill a hole, then you will have after a uh, small burr. Then the, the question is, what are the reasons for deburring? Why people, why uh, you make deburring? Uh, why, uh, we, why is this necessary? There are three main uh, reasons. The first is functional, then you have some ergonomic reasons and uh, aesthetic reasons also. When we think about the functional, yeah, when we go in the production, for example, and you have some parts um, which are full of burrs, and then you have uh, risks uh, when you want to uh, assemble some parts, when you make positioning, or on the component, for example. Yeah, after each mechanical machining, uh, in, many, in some cases, you want to make coating. And when there are some small burrs, there is a risk of corrosion, or think about of the injection systems. When you have injection bodies, valve bodies, and there are small burrs and cracks, and when you have a high pressure, a high forces in this body, and there is a sharp edge, a small burr, then there is a, a must break position, and the valve body in the car, in the, in the system, can break, can explode. So to in, um, avoid it, then you need the, uh, the debarring. And of course, in the unit itself, uh, you will see in the practice application of this um, valve block later. Um, when you have some burrs and there are some dynamic uh, cylinders, for example, or you have oil uh, flowing in the part and there are some burrs and sharp edges, the function in the unit are not really uh, given as it's uh, necessary. Um, so it can uh, disturb uh, in the, in the um, system or wear parts, all the dynamic parts in the cylinder. Yeah? When you have a sharp edge, a long burr, and you have a cylinder on each on e cycle, um, they disturb each other. You have a, a, a wear part of the cylinder parts, for example. Then the next the ergonomical. Um, of course, the uh, risk of injury, yeah, when you think about work tools and there are sharp edges, there's a risk of uh, injury for the grippers, for the work tools, um, there is a risk for them. Of course, the aesthetic one, you have metallic parts and they are full of burrs, yeah, it is absolutely no-go 
um, or for example, think about the medicine parts. Yeah, no, no of us uh, want to implant a uh, knee plate is full of burrs. They must be perfect deburred and um, so that we are safe and that have a good feeling. This is a really high quality um, deburred part. And uh, about quality and about the different processes, what, uh, when, which, with which um, debarring process you can make debarring. Uh, there are some well-known uh, classical processes. Uh, first of all, the manual debarring, all of us know that, to make debarring by hand um, takes time. The brushes, for example, the brushing is a well-known uh, technology. The vibrotic grinding in a big tube, uh, the thermal debarring, of course, with, high, with, with explosion, uh, well-known as TAM, uh, or pressure flow lapping or aggressive flow, oppressive flow machining, well-known as AFM, or, of course, the water jet debarring, or known as HD debarring, with water and high pressure in the tubes. So all of this has their own advantages, but also disadvantages. But we don't, I don't want to talk about the characters of these uh, processes. Today, I want to talk about the ECM debarring. And with that topic, I start the application example uh, of the debarring of the wolf block. The wolf block I have here next to me on the table. The wolf block is a um, metallic part, is uh, in the length of 120 millimeters approximately, with a brightness of 100 millimeter, uh, with a height of 140. And there are some intersections. When we have a look in the part, um, we make a cross section across through the part. And only in that, on that line uh, view, you can see uh, red edges. On one line, you can see, you can count approximately 10 intersections where uh, ECM debarring is needed. And the request here is a, a break edge of 0 point up to 0 0.3. Yeah? And the weight here is um, approximately 1.2 kilograms. And when you think about manual debarring, go through these holes, then there are some limits. And for that, I want to show you our solution. Here comes already the first question from our audience. How do you make sure that the debarring is only done at the desired points? We have a, for each part, for each application, we have a customized, a special fixture. So we pick the valve block inside, yeah? and then only there, and you can see some cylindric parts on the right side, and only there where the burr is uh, in position, only there we make the barring. How we do it, how we design the fixtures, and what is the behind, in the next slides, I will talk in three or two minutes about it, and then we can give exactly the answer on this question. But when we go back to the, um, to the valve block, this valve block is a part of this brake system. This is this component behind the brake disc, and this valve block is installed in each truck. So when we think about, um, there are some bursts, some chips in the intersections, and there are some centric, some holes, then it the, can be an accident, it can be a risk. So the reason here for, for parts like Wolf, for this Wolf block, for example, is the whirl part and, of course, the disturbance due to burst coming off. Yeah? When you have loose chips in the whole system, then you, the brake um, is the, 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 the complete system cannot brake or cannot function like it has to be. Then we have a risk of accidents on the street. And this is the reason why we, have, why we need a very high uh, quality debarring. We talk about now about the process. How will we ensure that only where the burrs are that we make only debarring there? Let us look on the process itself. Electrochemical machining is based on the principle of electrolysis. In the process, in the process there are four essential components. And I will start with the red one. And I thought before there are some blue and red colors. And um, this, the idea behind this, we take your workpiece. We take your workpiece bring in our process, in our work tool, and contact with the plus side on our power source. And when we have a plus contact, we call that anode. All these red colors brings to the anode side to your workpiece. Then you have the plus, um, electron, uh, the plus uh, side of the, of the power source. And then we have um, our work tool. And you see the work tool has always the design, the form, as your workpiece, yeah? it can be a cylindric, it can be a 3D form, or it can be on gears and something like that. 
Um, and of course, uh, we have our power source. Power source, nothing else than an our generator. The decision in, on which um, size, on which capability of uh, capacity of a generator is uh, decided by our experts. Yeah? When we have a big application center where we are very, very proud that we can um, make our tests and um, our um, experiments in our application center. And then we decide which uh, size of generator we choose. So we have your work piece, we have our work tool, we have our power source. And the most important medium in our process is the yellow one, this is the electrolyte solution. Electrolyte solution is a natrium nitrate uh, based um, solid uh, medium. Yeah, it's a water, it's a mix with uh, normal water and uh, chemis uh, chemistry salt. Yeah. And, um, this chemistry salt is, helps that the complete systems um, is close, is a closed system. The ele electrolyte solution with the natrium nitrate has a better conductivity than normal water. And that's the reason why we take it. And we have a constantly fluidness. So it comes with an amount of, uh, bar of pressure and goes out of the process uh, uh, back. And what happens in the process, we see, we will see in the next slide. There is one more question from our audience regarding the electrolyte. How dangerous is it and uh, what safety measures must be taken? Um, how dangerous is the electrolyte? Uh, electrolyte is nothing else than chemistry salt and water. Um, we tell, of course, don't drink it. Yeah? Be sure there are some safety uh, requirements uh, uh, like uh, safety glasses um, or some uh, wear uh, where you have to when you work with that. But in each ECM IMAC machine, there are some light curtains in front of the working area. And when you go through or when you stop it and you break this light con uh, circuit uh, con uh, contact, then the whole process, all the pumps in the machine stops directly. So you have absolutely no uh, fluing of the electrolyte. And of course, um, the old system with the tank, uh, with the electrolyte management system and uh, you will see the comfort integrated. The CI machine is a compact form on one single frame. So you have the working area, you have the electrolyte management tank, and the filtration is all installed on one machine frame. So you have no tubes and so on. Everything is one frame. It's the first thing. But the main point why we um, have absolutely no danger is, is we have in many, many cases, in 95% in our, our design of our work tools, we have closed ECM debarring work tools. What closed work tools means, I will show later in the next chapter. Mm -hmm. And but when I forgot, please tell uh, ask this question again because it's a very very important question. I'll remind you. Um, so then back to the process itself. I told you there are some working gap. Um, there is some anode and cathode. And here you will see in the video on the left side the philosophy of the process again. The anode. Yeah, so with the plus, the cathode with minus, and there is some yellow one, the isolated coating. Why we quote, and there's also one reason why it is a very high quality process. So when we look again, you will see um, there's a working gap. Um, some words of the working gap we require um, in a range of maximum 0 0.3 in the main cases uh, of input door lengths. Um, but about the um, burr classes, I will talk also later. But here you can see a constant fluing of the electrolyte. That means when we, we, we remove in the process, we flush fresh electrolyte, cleaned electrolyte, and flew um, uh, electrolyte with metal hydroxide out of the process. So it is a constantly cleaned process all the time. And how we be ensure, that was the questions before, that we only make the burring there is when you have the cylindric part, for example, here, yeah, it can be injection body, can be a camshaft, and you see there red highlighted edges after milling, after trilling. Um, uh, then there is the task, only there we make the barring. And how we do it, when we have on the uh, view on the right side, yeah, you can see uh, dark, more, much more dark black positions. These are the um, active areas and these are the passive form of this uh, uh, injection body here or the tube part here and only there where the 
red highlighted burr is, is make, make the burn. The rest is coated, yeah? as you can see also the yellow color in the video. Yeah? So that means we have only the barring there um, where the really the burr is. Yeah? Okay. Um, one more question one from more our question. audience. I want to interrupt. Uh, how do you handle the different burr lengths? Um, of course, uh, how we handle it. First of all, and uh, the most effective um, discussion or the um, idea to have very high quality and stable process is, of course, to go deep in, in deep discussion with our partners and, and customers that we say, okay, what are the pre uh, uh, operations before ECM? Yeah? Yeah? In which direction looks the, the burr, for example? But of course, in, in, during the serial production, the input burr lengths can be changed, can be longer. Uh, um, when the tool is had a little bit wear from the from the mechanical machine before, um, in each machine, in each EMAC machine, we have a short circuit test. Yeah, we can we can um, dedicate, for example, in one part there is a longer burr than the other, and because before the process starts, yeah, the, the the fixture will close and so on, and all the cathodes will be in position. Um, we have a pre-flushing and so on, and then we have a a few seconds, a short circuit test. In that uh, few seconds, we dedicate our, are there any long burrs? And then uh, we can, we will show it on our HMI. Okay, there is a miss, there's a not okay part, there is something wrong, please check it. Mm -hmm. So this is also, but in each cycle, this is uh, for us um, in the standard package inside. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So back to the process itself and uh, regarding the timing and the coming, the, the common a process time for one bottom-bottom uh, time is in uh, a range of uh, approximately 60 seconds. And what I want to uh, show you here is the time distribution. Yeah? How many persons is in one in which um, process step? So that means uh, when we look, um, the most uh, number is here. Uh, <laughs> 40% of the ECM processing. That means really in this 40% is really power time, uh, where the electrons flew um, through the process. And the next, of course, the part change time is um, uh, 33%. So, and the others, of course, the process time, uh, when we make uh, pre-pressure um, and afterwards uh, the non-productive times, so for example, pre-cleaning and post-cleaning, but we take uh, today a view on this approximately 70% of the total time. How we can decrease this time? Because this time, and I will, we will show you how you with the EMAC technology, with the EMAC solution can solve cash money, of course. So um, for that, we, look, we have a look now on our CI debarring system. Um, the CI machine, uh, I told before, is a comfort integrated. Integrated means on one machine frame, yeah, here you have the control cabinet with the generator. Yeah. Um, you have the waste air purification, so when there are some aerosols in the working area, it's directly filtered out. It is a uh, um, yeah one one uh, part uh, solution, for example, that uh, the waste purification is a component itself, or we can connect directly to the facility of of your halls, for example, is absolutely flexible. Um, the electrolyte management system, the old tank system, the pumps, is also installed, integrated on this machine frame. Um, of course, the working area in front of the uh, machine, which uh, is the installation area for the working tool, uh, debarring uh, work tools. And last but not least, the 15-inch HMI. Uh, um, the HMI 15 inch is very, very big. We choose that one because that in the main base view, um, you have all the um, uh, important information uh, about the process parameters. Which parameters that are, I will tell you in a few slides. There came up one more question from the audience. What type of cleaning uh, needs to be done after the ECM or is cleaning not required? Um, after ECM uh, is can be cleaned. Um, is this up to the up to the philosophy of the customers? Um, of course, uh, when I told before uh, chemistry salt, they can the first question mark is uh, what about the corrosion risk? Um, but this all turnkey solution 
we tell our customers, hey, uh, we, we are, our offer is that you take a, a cleaning solution afterwards. Um, sometimes when, some, for, for example, after ECM, one hardening uh, or something else are uh, the next process step, only one um, flushing step, uh, not a really cleaning can be, but this is a question is a very, very flexible, up to the requirement, up to the whole process, uh, the manufacturing system behind. Um, but this is what we talk about, uh, what, we, what we decide with our customers directly. Mm -hmm. yeah. We have, of course, some partners where we uh, work very, very deeply with them. Um, and also later you will see um, a completely automated ECM line with pre-cleaning and also with post-cleaning. Mm -hmm. Okay. So back to the CI machine, um, yeah, everything is installed on one machine frame and I told you also the electrolyte management system. Uh, yeah, on the left side you have the front view of the machine with also the working height uh, and also the electrolyte management system. It is decided or chosen because of the ergonomic uh, height for maintenance uh, and you see behind also filtration chamber filter press about the filtration systems we will talk also tomorrow, today. So, the debarring system, uh, when we have a look on the footprint, and um, you need approximately from the minimum six square meter, and six square meter you have everything that you make, can make ECM debarring. You know, a square meter costs money, that you have, for that you need very compact machine on six square meter. You can start with ECM debarring. The number one is the CI machine, and number two is the ECM filter. Um, we will see today one filtration system um, with the chamber filter press and the other with the ECM filter, with the cartridge filtration. And I will also show you um, the difference uh, or, or about these two filtration um, things or uh, systems. <clears throat> There's one more question from the audience. When dissolving chrome into the electrolyte, is hexavalent chrome generated? Um, hexavalent chrome, yes, it can be generated. This is based on this uh, mechanical component of the material. Um, but for that, of course, there are some um, yeah, reduction units in, in, in included. How it looks, I will show it in the next page. Um, you will see when we have a look here, or um, you have a dual machine, but I go one slide further to answer this question. Um, when you look here, for example, and you have here a unit like that, this unit uh, is a Chrome 6 reduction unit. Yeah? Um, this is the small unit behind of the machine. Uh, and of course, there are, we have a few, uh, two different uh, solutions. Yeah? So this is the Chrome 6 reduction unit that we change or that we increase from hexavalent to uh, three-valent uh, chromium six, uh, three plus, and then we have no problem with safe and healthy. Yeah. So this is a common thing, what we know, what also we are, um, yeah, make many, many tests and practice in our application center. Okay, now. So back to the CI Duo. Um, yeah, the CI Duo, of course, I showed you before the single version, uh, which on one, on, one, on one machine frame is the working cabinet. Electrolyte management. The dual is the with the same electrolyte management system. System you have two working areas. Huh? Uh, with the CI dual, you can work with two philosophies. Huh? Two philosophies means, um, for example, on the uh, on the left side you can start uh, run the process. On the right side you can load and unload, and then you can change so that you can uh, reduce the loading and unloading time. Or you can make a parallel machining, that means completely independent uh, and run um, directly. So that means you have two different, two different ECM machines with on one place on the smallest and a very, very less footprint. Yeah. Um, also, some customers, some partners of us make that they say, okay, I make operation 10 and 20 and have the one equipment for aircraft management for a control cabinet and so on. So the footprint uh, here, that um, when we have a look, uh, of course, with the CI Duo, yeah, the CI Duo and the chamber filter press, uh, number two here on the right side, um, this layout is very flexible. It's up to customers' uh, need, needs, what customers have sp space. Um, 
are there some walls in the facility? This project planning we make uh, in the project phase with the customers together so that we can also um, install the chamber filter press in the, behind the machine. So this is absolutely flexible. Dirk, came one more question up for the electrolyte. So how long can the electrolyte be used and is there any filtration unit required? Um, I have some uh, customers, um, they change one time per year the tank. Mm -hmm. um, normally when everything is in the right area, when the acid dosing and everything and all the membranes, which makes all automated, there's a very, very long uh, lifetime. Yeah? Um, many customers, they pump it out of the tank, clean the tank and bring it again. So how, how much time can we use is, I would say, I would answer, um, Years normally, mm -hmm. yeah, really years. Is there any filtration unit required? Yeah, it is required. We um, uh, offer that chamber filter press or ECM filter. Um, how much more uh, particles and so on? I will also tell. Yeah, how many particles? Because what we remove, we have no burst. We have uh, metal hydroxides, and there are some uh, burst, uh, some some sizes. And how we do it, I will show it in the next slides. Okay, um, so the CI debarring system, some facts. Uh, when we have here a characteristic um, yeah, points, the CI machine is a compact machine. You need uh, approximately 66 square meter. Um, the single frame machine allowed us a fast installation. Yeah. For that, it is, the machine is forklift ready and we can integrate the machine uh, within a uh, few minutes, uh, the generator scalable uh, is chosen by the uh, application. You can start with a small generator, uh, change it, increase it later on. The ergonomic, of course, easy access for maintenance. Um, in the invest time, nobody think it, um, thinks about maintenance, service, and so on. But maintenance, of course, very, very important and also the loading, the worker, the, the, the people behind which must stay in front of the machine. It can be a, a cute woman or an older man and because of the working height must be so ergonomical that the, both persons have no absolutely no problem with to working with our CI machine. So um, some further facts, of course, the completely controlled system is in Siemens. Um, also the touch panel has a Siemens. Um, all our EMAC ECM machines um, are contactants monitored, temperature controlled, and the pH controlled with acid do dosage. So that means when people hear now acid, and the first question is acid, what is that? Is there not any dangerous for my people? The question is clearly no, because um, the aquat management system is a compact and closed system, and everything, the dosage and so on, is everything automated, handled by the machine system, yeah? so that you have op absolutely no contact with, uh, with, uh, with adset or some other other medias. So the quill stroke with safety lock in the working area, yeah? you see some cylinders in the top of the machine, um, but um, of course this is the safety lock inside. The compact design with, elect uh, with uh, integrated um, electrolyte filtration, everything on the machine frame, and of course, the most um, um, one of the most uh, important components are the generator. The generator, we have two different uh, available um, technologies for ECM in our CI machine. The first is the DC um, debarring, the DC uh, current, and the pulse uh, ECM, pulse electrochemical machining. Both are possible. Um, which we can work with the ECI machine. So, um, I told before the ECM debarring tool is very, very important. And now you can see easily the, the two colors again. Yeah, the red one are for your workpiece where we make the contacting with the plus side and the blue one are the two. And you can see here the main fixture, yeah, the, uh, the mother fixture, we can call it. Um, with some cylinders on the right and uh, left side. And inside the fixture, when you have a look there, yeah, is uh, we have um, quick change tools. Yeah? You can see with very, very less tool, 
neatness you can change from time to time with the click system. One more question from the audience. Is it necessary to have the ECM process chamber connected to an exhausting device to evacuate process fumes? What about the needs if you if any to have a I think it's if it is necessary. Is it necessary to have the ECM the chamber connected to an exhausting device? Um, it is yes, it is um, necessary, yeah. But also I I, um, I answered before we can um, directly connect to the filtration system from the facility of the customers. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the fumes is taken out of exactly. the working in, area. In the working area, all the air can filter it out. Mm -hmm. um, so it is both flexible. It's not must, it's sometimes are cases of the height of the available height. Mm -hmm. So we can make, it is not must have, it is up to the customer's requirements. Okay. Thanks. Okay. So back to the fourfold uh, fixture. Um, of course, uh, in many cases, um, the question is, uh, ah, what is the lifetime? What is the change time? And so on. And I have different variants, very, very similar parts. Yeah. Here we have a quick change tool and uh, the changing time is less than five minutes. What you can also see here when you have in the center of the folds, you have two different forms. Yeah. You have one cylindric, one a form like a pyramid. So it shows the outer diameter is similar, but inside of the part is this um, different. So and you can change from one variant to the other less than five minutes. Yeah, you can say, okay, I only want to uh, drive with two folds or one fold, or you can increase up to four fold in within less minutes. One more question. Is there any effect of the microstructure of the parent part at the region of the deburring? Um, I would say, yeah, there will be, of course, uh, effect. Um, because we, we, we take parts, we don't sharp yeah, on the microstructure. But normally we have absolutely no thermical influence because um, the, um, the, the, the temperature of our, our electrolyte is within 20, 25 degrees. Mm -hmm. uh, so we have not these um, uh, chemical or the thermical influence. But of course there can be um, up to the material or the components, uh, the composition of the material can be some. But normally at the region of the barring, because um, the design yeah, of, the, of the fixture is really only on that position where we make the mm. bars. And I think the there's bars. no, I think there's very no or less is up to the yeah, application. Yeah. Yeah. Because there's no pressure on exactly. the part. Exactly. But this show, this, this test view, we showed before yeah, is everything in, in, in goal. Mm. And uh, we go in discussion with custom. Mm -hmm. So um, back to the debarring tools, uh, of course, um, um, we can make uh, in parallel more than four parts. Here we have a 32 fold uh, debarring tool. Yeah, 32 fold. Um, the first question is, uh, question is, uh, is it possible to load and unload these 32 folds within these 60 seconds? Make ECM debarring, load and unload. Absolutely, we say, we cannot imagine. Um, for that, we have a loading system with pallets. Yeah? The loading system for by manual, yeah, that uh, manual loading with pallets, and you can see in the middle picture, there are two, two pallets. Yeah? The first are in the machine, the second are ready for the next process. And of course, many uh, customers, you can start manual. Uh, you can say, this year I want to make uh, the manual machining or manual loading, and next year I will uh, adapt uh, to automation. All of our machine are, um, yeah, ready with uh, the automated interface, Profinet inter interfaces. So this is easily, you can go, you can uh, take it as a turnkey by, from EMAC, or of course, uh, you can make it by your own later when the volume increases. One more question regarding the setup of the machine. How much time and effort is required to set up the ECM machine uh, for a new workpiece? This, um, the setup of the change time between new workpieces, uh, as um, we, I showed you in the examples, of course, um, within five minutes, yeah, and after that, you start one uh, pre uh, process, then check it by, by, by the 
uh, quality department, for example. So the change time of the hardware within five minutes, I would say. Of course, there are some examples for, uh, like that one. Uh, this, that fixture you can see, they are ready for forklift. Yeah? You have to go in and change it. So there are uh, fixture change times. It takes approximately 45 minutes, yeah, which is really realistic. Otherwise, you have five minutes. The next, for example, the next example, yeah, now we have some um, cubic parts, uh, some uh, uh, housing parts. Now we will have a look of tube parts. Yeah, for that tube part, and everybody knows um, the application of the rail system and the injection systems in the cars. Um, when you see here the cross-sectionals, uh, the cutted view of the rail, you have red colors. And in these red colors, there will be uh, ECM debarring required. So, and of course, uh, what is the time, the change time? And each rail manufacturer has not only four cylinder, he has a three cylinder, two cylinder, or his customer order in calendar week 30, four cylinder, and then in the next week, uh, the three cylinder. For that, our solution and the change time is that we say we have we make a quick change tool, uh, that the change time is less than approximately five minutes. Yeah, and uh, you see in the picture, yeah, in the middle picture, um, without any tool, without any tool, um, you have um, you can stick and you can bring it to the left side, yeah, and then you can make plug and play and change the cathodes from type to type. And um, when you have, a, you can also change when you have double volumes from one uh, month to the other, for example, from one year to the other year, um, you can adapt from twofold. Yeah? You can see it here. You can make easily with quick change uh, tools. You can take this package, bring it to the left side, and then uh, stick it on the right side. And then you can uh, drive four parts in parallel. Also, the same is valid for the cathode side also. So. One point from my side. So today we have very much questions from our participants. We try to answer most of them during the presentation, mm -hmm. but we need to take the focus on the presentation um, that everyone can get the, the contents. And if there are any unanswered questions left, we will answer them later by mail. So no question will be, will be unanswered. Okay. But here we have one more question left, uh, which fits to the topic here. Um, it's about the question how long it will take to remove a debris on a 10 millimeter diameter pipe. Um, regarding the process <coughs> times, um, I would say we will wait a few, two slides, but because mm -hmm. after that um, um, we go directly in the bore classes and then also some process times. Um, so I would say we take this question and answer in two minutes. Okay, perfect. Thanks. Okay. So back uh, to the tools again. Um, some uh, uh, more examples uh, for maximum productivity. Um, the tools is uh, are with um, the multiple deboring work tool with turntables, uh, and the philosophy is in front of the work tool uh, on the first and the forward uh, front side is the loading and unloading position here. Here. And in the back is the process position. So it is in a flexible variant that you can have here in a, a tenfold or five folds in parallel. Yeah? So that you have really the loading and unloading in parallel in one working area um, so that you have a maximum productivity. So some debarring, how long it takes its time and so on. Um, we have a look on the Burr classes. Yeah? And of course uh, it is uh, for um, Research and development very very important to look deeper in the incoming position. What are the birds and how many classes are? So we have a bird class number one yeah, here on the left side. Uh, bird with a large bird flag. When we have uh, input bird lengths like that uh, in bird class number one, in common in the main um, uh, processes and main cases, we need a pre debarring necessary, like for example brushes have brushing um, so that we have input burr lengths of 0.3. When we have burr class number two with a little small burr flag, for example, um, we have to check and um, pre-deburring can be needed, can be necessary. Um, 
And in Burr class number three with uh, small Burr, or in Burr class number four the, without any visible Burr or uh, close to Burr three, we need no pre debarring. So when we have a different input condition, yeah, to this question uh, of um, of one of our customer um, viewer, um, we have um, we can answer the following. So <clears throat> when we have a tube like that and we have a small burr, yeah, it takes approximately only process time um, of 10 seconds. Yeah, that you have a smooth edge, smooth intersection there. When you have, for example, some milling parts, uh, milling housing parts, um, approximately 15 seconds in one cycle. Yeah, and when we have some drilled parts, uh, classic drilled parts, and look out at our microscope, it, approximately 20 seconds. So the range is between 10 and 20, 23 seconds only debarring time. But these 20 seconds are included in the 60 seconds that I told before. So when you hear the 20 seconds for one, process times and we saw multiple um, work tools. Um, of course, when we uh, debor four parts in parallel and we have a process time of 20 seconds, um, it will be only one quarter of this 20 seconds, which means five seconds per part. For that, we have an example. Yeah, when we look uh, in the machine inside, yeah, um, then we have here uh, the fixture. The process starts now and also, the topic before um, is electro dangerous and, so, and the questions like that. You see here the process at the moment is running. Yeah, we have the short circuit test done. Uh, we have a pre-flushing and you see under the fixture, yeah, under the working area in the bottom, you see a little bit of uh, flushing. But you, you, see, you don't see so the main brushing, what the main ideas are uh, from, from the people. So it is a controlled uh, flush in and the controlled flush out so that you have not this um, yeah, unusual un, uh, um, flushing like uh, many people think about that. Yeah? So, and this is within uh, these 60 seconds yeah? and also the closed systems is means that. And there are some cases of course that's, which is the closed uh, design of the fixturing is not possible. Um, but in 95%, we are uh, in the idea we try to make closed systems. So, um, process um, parameters. Uh, we say one of the advantages of the ECM is a stable process with a high, really high reproducibility. Of course, because of, of the because it's based on the electrolysis and physical and chemical uh, laws. But um, this is ensured that we, in each process cycle, in, on each EMAC ECM machine, we control and monitor all process relevant parameters. Yeah? And uh, which parameters we have, we see here on the, on the screen again. On the machine side, we have the current, the voltage, and of course the electrolyte, pressure, flow, temperature. And of course, the current monitoring was fast shut down when during the process one um, free burr or one um, yeah, uh, small crap is in the process, the process will shut down yeah, in each cycle so that we have no risk for the cathodes and that there's a contact uh, or electrolyte management system. We have the temperature, the contactivity and the pH value. So there's one more question from the audience. Regarding the investment, how much is the investment in an ECM system? Generally, ECM machines are quite large and go with huge investments. Um, so the, the answer is here, um, of course, we have a different range of the capacity based on the part. Um, smaller parts needs easier debarring tools. Of course, uh, when we have debarring uh, work tools for uh, valve blocks like that or the plate carrier can be a little bit much more, but uh, that uh, the audience have a feeling of the in investment range is approximately, it starts up to 190,000 euros up to 250. And, but this is the range I would say, but this is of course what we have an eye, what we have a look on each application. Yeah? Um, generally ECM machines are quite large and goes uh, with huge investment. Um, there is only uh, one, one answer to give is uh, um, 
the investment, the, 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 I think the footprint or the, the volume or the, the size of the machine is quite, uh, um, yeah, I would say, uh, fixed. When we have a view on the work tool, we try to show you that we have one base fixture and then you can um, make by your own or order by us um, for the all other difference variants. So that you don't need for each variant a complete fixture. Yeah, you have um, one base fixture and then you work with typesets, yeah? like you have on the other mechanical machines. So in that I would say you have a, a very um, uh, low investment, but of course this is up to it. what is the cost per piece and so on and so on. Yeah. Back uh, to the ECM process, um, let us have a view when we, have, when we start the project planning. Yeah? Um, the main case is that we have a uh, yeah, application, a task. Here on my left side again, uh, the plate carrier. This is an application from the um, e-mobility in e-cards. Um, and the task here, or how we start our project planning is that we go in discussion with customer and say, okay, what is the task? The customer wants the ECM debarring. We decide which machine. Uh, in for our solution is our CI or do we need may maybe a dual machine? Um, the plate carrier is the workpiece and of course what is the material? Um, what, what's about the handling? Um, and how must be the work to layout? Uh, here in that case is a one fold and what is the cycle time based on the shift model and so on and so on. We decide how we have to design our tool, uh, um, how we load it. Um, for example, the customer starts manual and later he wants to uh, make by robot grippers. Then we have to plan all these things that the robot can easily grip by, by the grippers and so on later. But the why the customer make this ECM was before he makes many, many tests and uh, researches on brushes. But brushing and this, um, the task here is to Deboard the 62 windows and 62 slots, and also the front surface. And um, this we, the pre um, uh, operation is made by laser, yeah? laser cut it. And there is a very, very tough laser burst. And when you make debarring uh, by brushes, then you form only the process or some brushes into the window, and you have still burst in on the part. So the idea was then, or the solution was then, that we make ECM debarring and we have uh, in one process step with one cathode all the cathodes inside and you have a fast and process um, process. One question regarding the process. Uh, what is the advantage of ECM debarring compared to TEM? Um, I would say um, the first advantage is that we have absolutely no thermal um, uh, influence. Uh, based on the temperature, uh, we have 25 degrees. Uh, temperature of TEM is much more higher because it's uh, explosion gas. Mm -hmm. um, the influence on the ECM is you have only there where the burr is. When you have TEM deburring, then after TEM, you will see the part is very uh, black colored because the gas is on coated on the part. So you have to. Um, clean very, very with high um, equipment uh, the part again, that is uh, common or nearly shiny again. And um, also, of course, the influence, as I told, the temperature, the influence only there where is the very needed, you have influence, yeah? and also the, the, the cleaning after the process is not so in that um, yeah, range than what you need for, uh, for time. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so, one more question before we uh, keep on going. Uh, which type of materials can be done? Um, there is one common answer. Um, all electric conductive parts materials can easy end. Absolutely no problem. Um, but of course, uh, in each project planning, we go in discussion and uh, also with our experts is this feasible for ECM? What is the surface finish after ECM? We have a very, very big knowledge, and so this is the, but nearly all ECM conductive, electric conductive uh, materials can ECM. So, 
filtration, the chamber filter press, we have two of uh, the, the particle size. What we filtered out is uh, less than five microns. Yeah, and the newest uh, filtration system is the ECM filter. Yeah. Also, you can like think uh, for your air filter in the cars. It's plug and play. The change time here with quick change uh, features is yeah, ten to twelve minutes in that range. So um, we talk about uh, automated lines, robot, and so on. Turnkey. Uh, here you have a completely ECM, EMAG ECM uh, turnkey solution. When we look deeper in the line, uh, we have here following. Um, uh, components and the number one is the ECM duo machine uh, with two ECM uh, chambers and uh, chamber filter press and the, this area between chamber filter press and the, and the ECM working areas is the maintenance area. Uh, that means in front of the machine you can run the process and behind of the ECM chambers you can maintenance in parallel to the process. The process must not be stopped. Um, then when we go in the layout again, when we go in the layout again, in number two, the parts come in the line. Number three, the code scanner. Yeah, this is DMC code, QR code, or something else. Then we know which part in which time is in our line. Yeah, that we have a part control system. Uh, number four is pre-cleaning. Yeah, because the, the pre-operation was uh, mechanical. There were some loose chips and a little bit of oil. The, so we clean it out, bring it down in number one again in our process. The arrows are the the arrows are the part flow direction. Then after ECM by the robot, bring it in number five, in 5.1, 2, 3, and 4. Yeah, the cleaning one, cleaning two, the preservation, and the drawing. Yeah. Number six is the drawer for the exit parts, go out of the line. And of course, number seven, yeah, in each automated line of EMAC is the SPC drawer. And number eight, NEO, or not OK part drawer. Um, yeah, this is standard. So, when we look again and uh, come to the end of uh, my presentation is to a summary. Yeah? And uh, here, not long words, not long sentences. Uh, so you bring, um, you have a part with spur. It can be a tube, can be a cubic part, can be not uh, only drill parts. You have burrs on your parts. You know why you want to make the burring. You know the reason, uh, functional reason, ergonomic reasons, aesthetic reasons. We start our design, our thinking, how we can make the barring, how we will design the, uh, the cathode. And we make a cathode that only make the barring or smaller, easier solution. But in the end, we go in our project planning with you together and we decide which machine, which generator capacity, what is your cycle time based on your line cycle or your uh, shift model. Then we uh, think about the rest of the equipment. Do you need the filtration? Do you need cleaning? Or you want to make directly a turnkey line with robot? Yeah. These all the things what we offer to you yeah, as EMAG ECM as a partner is we done in the, with all over the world. So in that, thank you very much for attention. And when we have some questions, we can go through. Many thanks to Mr. Yilmaz and welcome back to the audience. As already mentioned, we have today a lot of questions from the audience, from the participants. We are very happy about your interest and we now want to answer some questions. Um, if we may not have the time for answering all questions, we would give you the answer by mail and don't hesitate uh, to give us the questions directly anyway by mail or now in the input box and then we answer them for you in the uh, today or mm -hmm. later after the webinar. So the next questions. Do we require any special gloves and masks for handling uh, product post operations? Um, yeah, this is a question. What is the time and what is the uh, post operation? Mm -hmm. um, when there is, for example, a high risk corro um, corro corrosion part, then we make uh, preservation of the part. So when there is a t uh, that uh, there's, that we have no risk of corrosion, something like that, or afterwards uh, there was a case uh, after, directly after ECM goes through hardening, and only a small flushing can be necessary or mm -hmm. required. So this is up to customers required. So but from the ECM process, of course we say, yeah, as an expert, um, we would say let us do a uh, post cleaning. But this is up to what we have to decide with customer. Mm -hmm. Thank you.
can stainless steels also be deburred? Yes, stainless steel is a very, very good um, um, material for ECM debarring. Um, of course, as I told before, all electric uh, conductive uh, materials can ECM. Okay, thank you. What about tool costs in the ECM? Which costs must to be expected? So, um, tool costs. Um, of course, uh, it's very, very tough to say what is the price for costs like that. Um, what costs must be expected? Um, this is um, what we have to say. In the end, when we have a look to total cost of ownership, yeah, when we went through the running per, um, uh, per operation to the running uh, debarring, um, of course, there are the most common wear parts are the cathodes. And um, there are two factors for us which are important for us. Is the first is the change time must be very mm -hmm. low, yeah, that we have very easy quick change tools and things like that. And also um, the form, yeah, that we have, um, we go discussion with customer, do you really need a form debarring? Can we make other easier ring cathode, something like that? Yeah. And two costs, of course, there's an um, uh, area of starts up to a few thousand, can be much more expensive um, or much more higher prices, investment prices. But in the end, you have to look cost per piece and what is requirement of on the, on the drawing. Mm -hmm. Where do you see the limits of ECM? Um, of course, the limits of ECM, when you just imagine you have a um, plate with very, very much more, very, very um, uh, high number of small holes and there are small um, bursts, and there are, I would say, some limits. Um, because there are some other um, yeah, good de debarring processes. Um, so there can be a limit. So when you have surface, big surfaces, for example, or the limit, of course, the size of the part is limited. Yeah? When you have, for example, a train wheel, it is too big for ECM. Mm -hmm. There are some other well-known uh, debarring processes. When is pulsed ECM or PCM mm -hmm. used? Um, there are some two different foods because pulse ECM is a question of electrical. PCM is uh, a dynamic. So when you need a static um, process, then we take ECM or DCM, PCM. But we talk about this PCM topic in, in our next webinars. And then we will talk about this also the collex. So I would say the only difference is PCM is dynamic and um, pulse ECM can be a static. I'm looking forward to can several work pieces be machined simultaneously? What happens with burrs of different sizes? Um, yes, uh, as we saw many examples, uh, also in my presentation, uh, we have one fold, also four fold, six or 10 or 32 folds. And what happens with burrs of different sizes? So when we have, um, uh, we have, we can implement in the process as, um, some indicators so that each part, each uh, debarring position can dedicate it by um, standalone, by, by, by each of, and then, then we can look, is there any long burr or not? Um, so this is a reason or a philosophy of customer, what makes sense, what not makes sense. So it is a there is a possibility to dedicate and bring it out of the process. Mm -hmm. But of course, is there a long uh, burr in each of that? There's a short circuit shutdown um, feature, so absolutely no risk for the for the cathode. Mm -hmm. Thank you. One more question: What are the main advantages of ECM compared to other deburring processes? Um, the main that we summarize again. So the main reasons, uh, the main advantages are um, you have absolutely no uh, thermal. It's a completely mm -hmm. contact free. Yeah. You have no mechanical. Yeah, you have no mechanical because you have no contact. You have no thermal influence because uh, the, the degree of the uh, temperature of the electrolyte is within 20 to 25 percent. Um, you can make simultaneously and within really 60 seconds it can be very very fast. When we look to the 32 fold application you have a process time, a total uh, bottom bottom time of 60 seconds and um, you have 32 folds in the process. The, uh, the um, the cycle time per part is 1.6 seconds, so which is very, very fast. 
And also the quality is very high because you make only there the burrowing where, where really the burr is, not on the other surfaces. Mm -hmm. Okay. So as far as I can see, unfortunately, we are running out of time. So if there are any questions left, we answer them by mail. Please contact us also. Here are the contact details of Mr. Yilmaz. And if you wish to contact us after the webinar, feel free. <clears throat> so now we have reached the end and I hope um, you were able to take some interesting impulses with you. Uh, we would like to thank you once again for your participation and also in the name of our expert in the studio. Um, take care and if you want to, until next time. Thank you and goodbye.